Country music has always reflected real life. And one artist with a gift for capturing both heartache and hope is today's guest, Wade Hayes, who has multiple highs and lows on his life journey and has a special reminder for us all now. Welcome to Lifestyle Magazine. This is Lifestyle Magazine with your hosts, Lionel LaMountain and Mike Tucker. Our guest today is Wade Hayes, a country star. And Wade, we want to thank you for being here with us. Man, you've, you've accomplished so much with your career. And, and here you are on Lifestyle Magazine with us. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So how did you get discovered? How, how did you get signed and started with this? It's, it's a pretty interesting story. I originally had moved to Nashville to just play guitar mm -hmm. and maybe sing background. I wanted to be a Don Rich to somebody. Yeah. Else, you know. Yeah. And I ended up... Um, getting a job playing guitar for Johnny Lee, mm -hmm. if you remember him, Looking for Love. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, I got noticed out playing guitar for another artist that was trying to get a record deal. Mm -hmm. And um, some people in the industry approached me, and I started writing songs with um, this man named Chick Raines, yeah. who was one of the first people who noticed me, and, and we ended up writing a couple of number ones oh, that's um, awesome. very quickly. And it just all happened very, very fast. And, mm. and um, I, I had, did not have the intention of being an artist, but that's the way it worked out, and I'm yeah. thankful that it did. What was that journey like? That, you said it happened fast. It must have been a whirlwind. I mean, was it sounds like fun and enjoyable, but what was it like from your <laughs> perspective? It was. It was, like you said, you couldn't have said a better word for whirlwind. Um, I moved to town. I grew up building houses. My dad's a contractor. Oh, yeah. So uh, obviously I got a job building houses as soon as I moved here mm -hmm. and nearly immediately got the job playing guitar for Johnny Lee as well. So um, I wasn't sleeping much, but that was one of the <laughs> best times of my life. Yeah. Just exciting. I was from a very small rural town in Oklahoma called Bethel Acres, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And um, moving to Nashville and seeing all these, you know, wonderful, exciting things was just um, an amazing time. And I never saw any of this coming. It just happened so fast, but that is awesome. so thankful. Absolutely. And again, you've had so many wonderful hits that have been out, but, but you've got a new project. Is that right? It's just been released? I, yeah, just finished a record and got it out. Um, the latest is called Old Country Song. And it's just, um, like it said, you know, I, I like traditional yeah. country. I'm not really smart enough to do anything else but that. <laughs> So I doubt that that's uh, true, but that, that's a good story you, nonetheless. True. I can assure well, you. We're, we're your audience. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's my people, and I play a lot in Texas and Oklahoma, and, yeah. and uh, they still like tra traditional music there. Absolutely. And um, it's, that's what it is. It's, it's country songs. Where can they find that? Where can we find um, that? Anywhere that you buy uh, digital music, digital okay. downloads. Um, my, web, my website, wadehays.com. Awesome. Um, really anywhere, iTunes. We've not talked much about your father. But was he uh, around be able to see you transition from building houses to yes. being a country music star? My dad is still alive, and um, he's gotten to experience all of this. He and mom both. And uh, they're still in Oklahoma. In is that right? town I was raised in, Beth That's Lakers, awesome. Oklahoma. Yeah. And it's been a great ride for Did all of us. Did he have any uh, words of advice for you? He didn't. Uh, stay out of trouble. <laughs> you know, that, that was pretty I made much... I a few words, huh? Yeah, and, and yeah. that's exactly what I did. I, I worked really hard when I first moved to town. Now, you went on a ride of a different nature uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Tell me about that. I'm assuming you're speaking of the cancer. Yes. Well, in 2011, and yes, that was a very different ride. Yeah. Um, in 2011, I was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. Come on. Yeah, and um, I had no idea that I had cancer, much, much less stage four. You were what, 42? Yes, 41, 42, somewhere Man. around. And, and um, I, uh, you know, it was a blow. Yeah. It was a blow indeed. Um, I had no idea. Um, I, I was like a really healthy, yeah. you know, guy. I've, I've always been in the gym. I'm a, a bean pole if I don't work out. So yeah. I've really worked hard on putting weight on, muscle mm -hmm. mass, and was an avid runner. and. Mm -hmm tried to eat healthy, um, and to discover that I not only had cancer, but I was stage four. That, was, that had to be a shock for you, because it, it was. they didn't even advise you to start your colonoscopies uh, until you're 50, 50 right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the things that, you know, I advocate is, is yeah. getting, you know, if you have any kind of family history, get yeah. it checked Did you have out. a family history? No. Mm. Wow. No. So what was that news like for you when you got that? 
it was devastating. It, it definitely let the wind out of my sails, but it, it didn't seem like there was much time at all from diagnosis to, I, I was in such bad shape. Yeah. And, you know, we'll get to that, but mm -hmm. yeah. I started having, started having troubles um, immediately after I was diagnosed, yeah. serious troubles. Well, I, I want more of that story, but we're gonna have to wait until after the break. Yes. And so we will be back with more right after this. I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow, and to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Joining us today is country music star Wade Hayes. Thank you for being with us and telling us your story. Now, you were battling a health issue, and uh, when did you know for sure something was really wrong? Well, this, this story is, is um, pretty interesting how it all transpired. Um, like I said, I'd been having some minor issues, and I'd even spoken to a doctor about these, and you know, there, cancer was not even a consideration. Well, you're so young. Yes. Not in your family history. Right. In and shape. Um, yeah. yeah, in great shape. Worked out a lot, and um, so he just assumed that it was an internal hemorrhoid. I see. Mm -hmm. To be quite honest. Yeah. So how soon between that discussion with him to you really knew something was happening? About another year. A after year. That. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another year. And um, one evening, I was in my uh, kitchen getting ready to go to Houston mm -hmm. for a show, and um, I had this stabbing pain in my abdomen and started bleeding uh, severely. Okay. And I honestly thought that I had swallowed, somehow ingested a piece of glass or, yeah. or something. Um, that's how bad it was and yeah. the bleeding. Yeah. And I had no idea what was going on and, and then the, the um, symptoms subsided somewhat and I decided to go ahead and go to Houston. Went to Houston? On. Yes. <laughs> So I did, I did the show. I was still in, you know, a little pain, yeah. but it wasn't anything like the initial. Mm -hmm. And um, I still felt pretty rotten when I got home. So I immediately went to the doctor and Good. upon hearing my symptoms, he suggested we have a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. And um, I will never forget the day I went back to get the test results and um, he walks in and He's got the long face, you know. Mm -hmm. I know something's coming. Yeah. And he says, uh, you know, this, Mr. Hayes, you have cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And upon further tests, discover that it's metastasized oh. um, and it spread through uh, most of my liver, oh, lymph nodes. And um, so at this point, a couple of my friends have heard my diagnosis. And, and I don't, you may or may not know the group. Brooks and Dunn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, Kix Brooks calls and says he wants to get me with his doctor friends at Vanderbilt. And I'm convinced, had he not done that, then I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Um, they have a great team. Yes. Um, is about some of the best in, in, mm -hmm. in the world, actually. Um, Dr. Berlin is, Dr. Jordan Berlin. And so I get with uh, Dr. Berlin and Dr. Merchant, and we get a plan of attack and what we're gonna do. When Dr. Berlin told me when he initially presented the case, they, nobody wanted to touch it. Wow. They thought that I was too far too gone. Too far gone. 
Yeah. Oh, man. And Dr. Berlin wanted to tackle it. And so he talked him into it. So yeah. we get a plan of attack together. We're going to do um, chemotherapy or radiation prior to mm -hmm. surgery and try to shrink the tumors. Yeah. Most of my liver was, um, was infected with t tumors. Yeah. yeah. So w we get this plan of attack together, and then all of a sudden, my symptoms that brought me to the hospital mm -hmm. to begin with come back, you know, the doubling over in pain mm -hmm. and the bleeding. And Oddly enough, I'd had a scan that day. Mm -hmm. And as I was pulling into my driveway, um, the symptoms were so bad I, c I couldn't get out of my truck. Yeah. And, and I, oh, I had a prescription for a pain medication and I couldn't even make it to the pharmacy to pick this pick up. So, up. Yeah, yeah, so I go home, get out of my truck. And, and as I'm doing that, I get a call from the hospital where I'd had the scan. Yeah. And they said, um, the doctor said, I'm just looking, and this is the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. And he says, uh, you probably need to get to a doctor. And I said, okay, so you mean after the holiday, right? And he says, no, you need to get to the emergency room right now. Um, you've got a condition called intussusception mm -hmm. where your large intestine collapses on itself because oh. the tumor was so large wow. in there. And so I spent the night before and the morning of Thanksgiving in the emergency room at Vanderbilt. Yeah. And um, once again, the condition subsided, which it can. Sometimes yeah. it can go ahead and collapse and, and it can kill you. It can yeah. be a deadly condition and it, or it can reverse itself, which it did in my case right. twice now. What, what was your state of mind through um, all of this? I know what I'd be thinking, but what were you thinking? I was just thinking, I really want to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. And my manager, yeah. Mike Robertson, uh -huh. um, thankfully, has, he's been a good friend through all yeah. of this and he stayed with me in the hospital. And um, I, at about two o'clock in the morning, I got to go home. And mm -hmm. so after this happened, Dr. Berlin and Dr. Merchant decided we're in an emergency situation now. Yeah. So they decided to go ahead and have surgery without... Mm -hmm. Without know, doing the shrinking yeah. of the tumor with chemo. First. Correct. So um, we go into a marathon surgery um, on December 8th, 2011. Wow. And... Um, I actually heard that they were high-fiving each other, <laughs> that they had pulled it off. Wow. When it came out. It was over seven hours long. Come on. Yeah, but they removed 20-plus um, inches of my large intestine. Come on. These are just the numbers that I was told. Yeah, so. yeah. And he said 60 to 75% of my liver, mm. Mm. Um, some of my lymph nodes, mm -hmm. a small section of my diaphragm, and that's, that's just what was affected then. Man. And... You're a walking miracle. Well, I am. And, um, you know, most people who are diagnosed stage four yeah, no, don't make you, it. You don't make that. Um, everybody in my group at Vanderbilt didn't make it. I'm the only one. You're the only one. I'm the only one that made it. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel, to be honest with you, um, most of the time unworthy, yeah. but thankful and wondering how I'm going to repay this gift. Hmm. What, what do you think? How, how are you going to do that? I'm, I'm trying to find that answer. I yeah. do the best that I can work with can, cancer advocacy groups, mm -hmm. trying to get people tested and, you know, trying to comfort those who are diagnosed. Wade, I have a feeling you're doing a good job of it. I'm we'll, trying to. We'll talk more about that when we come back and we will be right back after this. Healers from God a devotional filled with practical yet inspirational teachings and real-life experiences with real-word application which will encourage the reader. Order your copy today at Amazon.com or MotivatedByLove.org. Scripture therapy offers solutions to challenges individuals face every day. Scripture therapy combines faith, psychology, and life experiences to reach those seeking more in their daily walk with God. The authors, Lester and Roxanne Trichet, have blended their skills to produce a powerful book that has the potential of helping people from all kinds of backgrounds and systems of belief. The Trichets are a dynamic duo it is a must read for anyone who wants to enhance their spirituality and improve their happiness quotient on day one. 
Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and www.scripturetherapycenter.com. Country star Wade Hayes is sharing an incredible story with us. And Wade, you're experiencing something that they would refer to as a survivor's remorse. Yes. And yet you're trying to find a way to give back. Do you want to talk more about that? I do. Um, I spent a lot of time asking God why, yeah. why this happened to me. And then again, why was I spared? And um, in, in a lot of reading and time in prayer, and um, I re read on one of those times I was really searching that we're to bear one another's burdens. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Because how am I supposed to bear somebody's burden that's going through the same thing if I haven't been through it myself? Mm -hmm. And as to the question why, why I made it, why was I chosen to pull through? Um, I got the answer to that question one day. I was speaking with my oncologist, Dr. Berlin, Mm -hmm. And he introduced me to a man who had been through something very similar, similar diagnosis, and was still alive after nine years. Wow. And this was when I was in the thick of it. And I met that man and saw that it could be done. This guy made it. Mm -hmm. There is hope. And that was the word. Yeah. You know, I was chosen to survive to maybe give somebody else hope, give like hope. that gentleman did. For me that day. What are some reasons that you think that you made it and, and how, and you said hope is one of them, of everything together, I mean what are some of the most important reasons you think that you pulled through this? I think that is the only reason that I've found. Um, and to show people well, so that it can be done, yes. I, that, I can't tell you how profound that was to realize that. So you're talking about hope and how important it was to you um, recovering from this. So mm -hmm. it's one thing to say hope, mm -hmm. but what, what did hope look like to you? What was hope going through this? Um, hope was knowing that it had been done. And um, I had mentioned added, adding meaning to your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because there, you know, the time before that, I'll be quite honest with you, was a pretty dark time for me. Mm. Just, fe you know, feeling lost and not knowing what to do with myself and, and knowing that you now had a cause. You've got cause. something to fight for yeah. and you've got others to think about as well. Did you, you know, um, people, it's terrifying mm. to discover you have cancer. Yeah, and not yeah. only that, that you, you know, may not be around much longer. Right. And, um, you know, when I first was diagnosed and learned how dire my condition was, mm -hmm. you know, there was a time it crossed my mind I may be going the way of the dodo, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that, be extinct. thank yes. God that didn't happen. And, and I'm still, you know, I, I still think there are reasons, there have to be more reasons that I made it. And I'm searching diligently for those. Right. What was your, you mentioned you prayed about this and God mm -hmm. gave you a cause. What was your walk with God like before diagnosis? Uh, did it stay the same? Was there a change? How did this affect? I have that? always been a churchgoer since a child, and, and you know, even since I moved to Tennessee, I always had a church that I attended. But certainly, my relationship had waned. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think everybody goes through that. In the world, life, especially, life gets in the way, mm -hmm. and and you let it get in the way. Mm -hmm. I let it get in the way, and you know causes with job and, and finances and, and personal problems, struggles, mm -hmm. they, they can all weigh on you and you, you pull away. And, but, you know, and I had been praying for help yeah. and direction. And I mean, I, I, <laughs> I thought that maybe he could have found a better way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but wasn't there an easier way to yes, do this, God? I but mean, really? Then Come again, on. <laughs> I realize, and uh, there is not a person that knows me well yeah. that will tell you that I'm not the most hard-headed person I've ever met. In so life. it took a two by four. So it to took speak, a two by four head. to get my attention. Well, yeah, yeah, but he certainly did. But you've you've mentioned something about uh, the meaning for your life, a purpose for your mm -hmm. life. It's been said that most men lead lives of quiet desperation. That really described that. you in some sense before this experience. It certainly did. And especially, you know, when the hits stop coming. Yeah. And you're scratching your head wondering what to do next. And, uh -huh. and I mean, there, 
you know, of course I was still playing and working, but it wasn't like it was mm -hmm. when, it, when everything was new and exciting. But um, it is, it does give me a lot of joy to help somebody. And I've discovered that that's some of the happiest times of my life is when I am actually helping somebody. And I have prayed and hugged many people, mm -hmm. or prayed with mm -hmm. and hugged many people after shows. Yeah. And I've seen many people in the audience bawling when I sing, sing the song, Go Live Your Life, mm -hmm. um, because they've been affected some way by the song. Yeah, Go Live Your Life. That's, that's a key phrase to you though, isn't it? Yes, um, <laughs> that is um, a title to a song that actually, it's a very interesting story with that I should probably tell you about okay. next time. All right. We, all right, we'll we'll take a break and we'll get to that story yeah. just a little bit. But I don't want to forget, go go live your life. That's yes. that's key. But you also said that you found the meaning now in helping other people. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that from people on this show and also in my work privately. Mm -hmm. People find their meaning when they're giving back to other people. Mm -hmm. People have gone through what you've gone through. Yeah, um, I find that, you know, I've gotten to do and see a lot of things in my life. And I've been all over the world. And a um, few things, you know, honestly, when, and, and I get away from it too and have yeah. to remind myself, few things do bring me peace like when I've made a difference to somebody or helped somebody yeah. out. That's almost the only thing these days. That's it, huh? Yeah. That's cool. You're cancer free and living life. That's Trying cool. my best. So tell us the story behind Live Your Life. This is another uh, intro. This whole, you know, seems kind of made up, but um, my oncologist, whom I've mentioned several times, Dr. Jordan Berlin, I love the guy, but he told me he came in. We were going over my blood work after I had been through cancer the second time. Wow. It came back, yeah, and I had to go through the whole thing again, all of the mm -hmm. chemotherapy, the surgery, and um, he said um, after that was all finished, we were looking on blood work, and he said, Wade, you know, I don't know if you realize or not, this is a big deal you were stage four, and mm. now there's no evidence of the disease mm -hmm. whatsoever. He said, you need to go live your life. Go and he was telling life. me two things. He was saying, you were stage four. This could come back at any time. You need to live your life. Mm. He was also saying, you were stage four. Now there's no cancer. <laughs> this is a miracle. You need to go live your life. Awesome. And um, I tried to take his words to heart, and it, it hit me so hard, I had to go home and write a song about it. Awesome. Well, when we come back, you're going to sing for us, right? I'd love to. We will be right back right after this. The Faith Unveiled Network was birthed out of a need to give exposure to unknown or hidden people that possess God's gifts and talents. There are preachers, teachers, musicians, clothing designers, artists, cooks, and many others that God has given extraordinary talents to. God is raising up these people in His kingdom that will glorify Him. Our goal is to bring these talents to your mobile devices, computers in your home and office, or on the go. With today's technology, these gifts and talents can be shared with you 24-7. Broadcasters that will bless your heart and your life. Currently, the Faith Unveiled Network shares these talents in the form of video and podcasting services. As the network grows, it will strive to move into other medias such as cable TV, satellite TV, and local TV. The goal is to enhance the experience of the network's TV shows through networking resources and communication activities that become available. The ultimate goal of the network is to build and bring unity to the Kingdom of God through its broadcasters via the internet, social media, mobile apps, and other available resources. By facilitating the use of the gifts of the Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, on a global level, each broadcaster brings their own gifts and treasured talents. Enjoy each moment, each broadcaster's TV show, and let them and us hear from you. We'd love to know that you're watching their programs and being blessed by their God-given gifts. Thank you for watching FUN, the Faith Unveiled Network. Thank you for watching FUN, the Faith Unveiled Network.
Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Wade Hayes singing, Go Live Your Life. Take it from someone who knows. Life ain't fair sometimes, but man, it ain't even close. You take a shot right on the chin. You lay there wondering if you'll ever get back up again. It took a miracle to open up my eyes And now I'll offer you some good advice Go live your life Go chase your dreams Cause we got no way you know Walk in our brains Swing for the fence, take that chance don't wake up one day to see it's passed you by. And go live your life. Well, I made a vow. If I pull through. I wouldn't take for granted what I used to I cherish each day Cause it's all we have Cause man you never know when it might be your last There's nothing like thinking you've reached the end To make you wonder just what could have been Go live your life, go chase your dreams Cause we got no way you know To get a copy of today's offer, please call 888-940-0062 And be sure to visit our website at lifestyle.org